Hello everyone, it is time for Turkey Tales. Please sit back, relax, and enjoy some feathered fun. Thanksgiving time is here. Let's give a great big cheer. Hooray for food and friends and family. Thanksgiving time is here. Knock, knock. Who's there? Annie. Annie who? Annie Buddy seen the turkey? This is the story, This Little Turkey, by Allie Franis. This little turkey went to market. This little turkey swept the floor. This little turkey drew some pictures and this little turkey wanted more. This little turkey knitted a sweater. This little turkey grabbed a treat. This little turkey set the table. And this little turkey said, let's eat. The end. Turkey Trouble by Wendy Silvano, illustrated by Lee Harper. Turkey Trouble. Turkey was in trouble, bad trouble. The kind of trouble where it's almost Thanksgiving and you're the main course. But Turkey had an idea. What if he didn't look like a turkey? What if he looked like a horse? Well, surely Jake wouldn't eat a horse for Thanksgiving. His costume wasn't bad. In fact, turkey looked just like a horse, almost. Moo, said the cow. Stop horsing around, turkey. How'd you know it was me, moaned turkey. Too short, said cow. Gobble, gobble, grumbled the turkey. But looking at the cow gave Turkey a new idea. Surely Farmer Jake wouldn't eat a cow for Thanksgiving. His costume wasn't bad. In fact, Turkey looked just like a cow. Almost. Oink, 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 snorted the pig. Holy cow, is that you, Turkey? How'd you know it was me, groaned Turkey? Too skinny, said pig. Gobble, gobble, grumbled the turkey. But looking at pig gave Turkey a new idea. Surely, Farmer Jake wouldn't eat a pig for Thanksgiving. Well, his costume wasn't bad. In fact, Turkey looked just like a pig. Almost. Bah, bah, bleated sheep. Quit being a ham, Turkey. How'd you know it was me, wailed Turkey? Too clean, said sheep. Gobble, gobble, grumbled Turkey. But looking at sheep gave Turkey a new idea. Surely, Farmer Jake wouldn't eat a sheep for Thanksgiving. His costume wasn't bad. In fact, Turkey looked just like a sheep. Almost. cock a doodle do cried Rooster. Bad idea, Turkey. How'd you know it was me, howled Turkey. Too brown, squawked Rooster. Gobble, gobble, grumbled Turkey. But looking at Rooster gave Turkey a new idea. In fact, it was his best idea yet. He already looked like a rooster. This costume would be easy. Surely Farmer Jake wouldn't need a rooster for Thanksgiving. Or would he? Rooster might be his next choice. Turkey words, since roosters and turkeys look so much alike. Oh, gobble, gobble. Well, Farmer Jake came into the barn Turkey, turkey, turkey! Come on, come on, come on, wherever you are! Where's the turkey? asked Farmer Jake's wife. I don't know. I looked everywhere. Oh dear, what will we do without a turkey for Thanksgiving? Well, we could always eat the rooster, I guess. Oh, no, not rooster, thought turkey. He looked around desperately for one more idea, and, and then he found it. 
His costume wasn't bad. In fact, it was Turkey's best yet. Ding dong! Happy Thanksgiving! Did you order a pizza, asked Farmer Jake's wife? Nope, he said, but it's a good idea. So they all sat down and gobbled up the pizza, and it was Turkey's best Thanksgiving ever. Gobble, gobble. That was Turkey Trouble. A turkey is a funny bird. Its head goes wobble, wobble, and it only knows one funny word, and it's gobble, 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 gobble. Knock, knock. Who's there? Arthur. Arthur who? Aren't there any leftovers? Here's a poem from It's Thanksgiving by Jack Prelutsky. It's called If Turkeys Thought. If turkeys thought they'd run away a week before Thanksgiving Day, but turkeys can't anticipate. That's why there's turkey on my plate. Hello, I'm here to share with you the story of The Great Thanksgiving Escape by Mark Fearing. He did both the pictures and the words. If you've ever been to an extended family get together with your cousins and aunts and uncles, you might be able to relate to this story of two cousins. Here he is on his way to the get together. You can see the food in the back seat next to him. And their arrival. It was another Thanksgiving at Grandma's. He looks so happy, doesn't he? You can play in here with the rest of the kids, Grant Garvin's mother told him. We'll call you when the turkey's ready. Have fun, Gavin's dad called. But Gavin knew it was not going to be fun at all. Hey, someone whispered. It was his cousin, Rhonda. What do you say we break out of here? and head for the swing set in the backyard. I'm supposed to stay here until turkey time, Gavin said. Rhonda climbed out from under the coats. The way I see it, Gav, she said, is that sometimes you have to make your own fun. Woohoo! Are you with me? She asked. Gavin nodded. I'm in. They crept out and headed for the front door. Suddenly, Rhonda jumped back. That way's blocked by vicious guard dogs. I think they picked up our scent, she yelled. Run! But when they rounded the corner, Rhonda stopped dead in her tracks. It's the hall of ants! We'll be pinched and smothered for sure, she cried. Gavin trembled, remembering last year. He'd had to ice his face for three days. They took off, but it was too late. Rhonda had been grabbed. Luckily, she acted defensively and managed to break free without a pinch. Ah Quick, before another one comes in for a snuggle, yelled Rhonda as she bolted past. Head for the back door. Oh no, it's the great wall of butts. Rhonda yelled, it's certain death to get between them and the TV. 
There they are watching football. Down here, said Rhonda. I bet there's a way through the basement. Gavin wasn't so sure. It looked dark and it smelled like dirty socks and hair gel. They peeked cautiously around the corner. <gasps> Zombies! Rhonda screamed. They'll eat our brains as an appetizer. All the teenagers. <laughs> they raced back up the stairs to the kitchen. Just a little snack for the road, Gavin said. No, yelled Rhonda. It's a trap. She grabbed Gavin just before they were surrounded. They turned and sprinted for the door. We're almost there. But they skidded to a stop when they reached the glass. Well, at least we tried, Rhonda said. Gavin was quiet for a moment. Then he said, the way I see it, Rhonda, is that sometimes you have to make your own fun. The end. I heard Mr. Turkey say, gobble, gobble, gobble. Soon will be Thanksgiving Day. Gobble, gobble, gobble. People say it is such fun, but I think that I will run and hide until the day is done. Gobble, gobble, gobble. Gobble, 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 gobble. This is the story of the Little Old Lady Who Swallowed a Pie by Allison Jackson and Judith Byron Schnackner. This is a great story. It is also a story that you sing. Do you think you can help me sing it? It's a great one. Let's try it. I know an old lady who swallowed a pie a Thanksgiving pie, which was really too dry. Oh my, oh my. I know an old lady who swallowed some cider that rumbled and mumbled and grumbled inside her. She swallowed the cider to moisten the pie, the Thanksgiving pie, which was really too dry. Oh my, oh my. I know an old lady who swallowed a roll just swallowed it whole, the entire roll. She swallowed the roll to go with the cider that rumbled and mumbled and grumbled inside her. She swallowed the cider to moisten the pie, the Thanksgiving pie, which was really too dry. Oh my, oh my. I know an old lady who swallowed a squash. Oh my gosh, she swallowed a fat yellow squash. She swallowed the squash to go with the roll. She swallowed the roll to go with the cider that rumbled and mumbled and grumbled inside her. She swallowed the cider to moisten the pie, the Thanksgiving pie, which was really too dry. Oh my, oh my. I know an old lady who swallowed a salad. She was looking quite pallid from eating that salad. She swallowed the salad to go with the squash. She swallowed the squash to go with the roll. She swallowed the roll to go with the cider. The rumbled and mumbled and grumbled inside her. She swallowed the cider to moisten the pie. The Thanksgiving pie, which was really too dry. Oh my, oh my. I know an old lady who swallowed a turkey. Her future looked murky after she swallowed that turkey. 
She swallowed the turkey to go with the salad. She swallowed the salad to go with the squash. She swallowed the squash to go with the roll. She swallowed the roll to go with the cider. Then rumbled and mumbled and grumbled inside her. She swallowed the cider to moisten the pie, the Thanksgiving pie, which was really too dry. Oh my, oh my. I know an old lady who swallowed a pot. Yes, she did. <laughs> I kid you not, she swallowed the pot. She swallowed the pot to go with the turkey. She swallowed the turkey to go with the salad. She swallowed the salad to go with the squash. She swallowed the squash to go with the roll. She swallowed the roll to go with the cider. Then rumbled and mumbled and grumbled inside her. She swallowed the cider to moisten the pie. The Thanksgiving pie, which was really too dry. Oh my, oh my. I know an old lady who swallowed a cake. For goodness sake, a 10 layer cake. Here we go. She swallowed the cake to go with the pot. She swallowed the pot to go with the turkey. She swallowed the turkey to go with the salad. She swallowed the salad to go with the squash. She swallowed the squash to go with the roll. She swallowed the roll to go with the cider. Then mumbled and grumbled and grumbled inside her. She swallowed the cider to moisten the pie. The Thanksgiving pie, which was really too dry. Oh my, oh my. I know an old lady who swallowed some bread. Happy Thanksgiving! I'm full, she finally said. The end. What did the turkey say to the hunter? Are you ready for another turkey tale? I am. This is The Turkey Train. It's written by Steve Metzger with pictures by Jim Calliott. This is gonna be some trip. Wake up, Betty, Bill, and Jane. Get ready for the turkey train. Buy your tickets in Fort Wayne. All aboard the turkey train. Feathers ruffled? Don't complain. Find your seat on the turkey train. By afternoon, we'll be in Maine. Off we go on the turkey train. Chugga, chugga, choo, choo. Chugga, chugga, choo, choo. Games and puzzles for your brain. Make new friends on the turkey train. Gobble, gobble, tasty grain. It's time for lunch on the turkey train. Outside the window, pouring rain, but we're warm and snug on the turkey train. Rock and rollers entertain. You can sing and dance on the turkey train. Stopping now near Lake Champlain. Don't be late for the turkey train. Over the mountains and through the plain, there's lots to see on the turkey train. Chugga, chugga, choo, choo. Chugga, chugga, choo, choo. Eee! The engineer applied the brakes and the turkey train slowed down. From her window, Betty said, we're here, I see the town. The turkey train stopped at last and the doors all opened wide. Turkeys large and turkeys small quickly raced outside. They went to play in the snow. Look at everything they're doing. Turkey skating, turkey skiing, sledding down a hill. Turkeys having snowball fights. Oops, one just hit Bill. Poor Bill. I really like this snow turkey. 
The turkeys played all afternoon until the sky grew black. We've had so much fun, said Jane, but now we must go back. The turkeys were all in their seats and no one could complain because everyone was fast asleep on the turkey train. Good night, turkeys. Have a good trip. Here's another poem from It's Thanksgiving by Jack Palutski. This one is called Gobble Gobble. When the turkey gobble gobbles, it is plump and proud and perky. When our family gobble gobbles, we are gobbling down the turkey. Hello, Mr. Turkey, how are you? Hello, Mr. Turkey, how are you? With a wobble, 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 and a gobble, gobble, gobble. Hello, Mr. Turkey, how are you? Who is never hungry on Thanksgiving? The turkey. He is always stuffed. Gobble. Gobble, 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 gobble. Gobble, 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 gobble. Gobble, 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 gobble. What? I'm, I'm, I'm doing the turkey story time for our turkey friends here. Gobble, 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 what? They're not turkeys, they're children? Oh, you're right. They haven't got as many feathers as I thought they did. Okay, all right then. Well, let's, uh, let's read Turk and Runt, a Thanksgiving comedy. It's nice to see children out there. Turkeys don't behave very well. Turk and Runt. Turk's parents were very proud of him. He was the biggest, strongest, and most graceful bird on Wishbone Farm. That's Turk right there. That's his little brother Runt. He's a dancer, said his mother. He's an athlete, said his father. He's a goner, said his brother Runt. But no one ever listened to Runt. Every year, the animals on Wishbone Farm looked forward to the excitement of autumn. Carloads of people came to pick red ripe apples in September. Folks arrived to choose plump orange pumpkins from the field in October. And come November, it was turkey time. One by one, the fattest, roundest turkeys were chosen. Chosen for what? asked Runt. To be the lead dancer in Swan Lake, said his mother. To play in the Thanksgiving Day football games, said his father. To be roasted and gently basted, said his brother Runt. But nobody ever listened to Runt. So every morning in November, the family watched Turk practice his dance steps. One, two, three, lift. And every afternoon, the family watched Turk practice his football moves. 16, 23, 47, hike. He's getting stronger, said his mother. He's getting bigger, said his father. Oh, he's getting juicier, said Runt. Two days before Thanksgiving, Madame Waddell, the famous ballet instructor, arrived at Wishbone Farm. She came to choose a turkey. An audition, Mother squeaked. It's your time to shine. Go out there and shake those tail feathers. He twirled and whirled. He, he leaped, he spun. He did a triple somersault and landed in a split. Look at the size of the drumsticks, said Madame Waddell. That is a beautiful bird. Mother beamed. Father puffed out, puffed out his tail feathers. Brunt puffed out his feathers too. Then he threw himself on the ground. He flapped, he flopped, 
He hissed and spluttered. He gobbled like a maniac. Gobble, 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 as he chased Madame Waddell out of the barnyard. Sacre bleu, screamed Madame Waddell. The birds are crazy. Then she drove far, far away from Wishbone Farm. No swan lake, cried mother. No starring roll, cried father. No roasted turk with chestnut dressing, cried Runt. Hooray! Oh, but no one listened to Runt. The day before Thanksgiving, Coach Giblet of the Crow City Corn Huskers came to pick out a turkey. This is your chance, said father. Get out there and strut your stuff. Turk sprinted to the front of the barnyard. He bobbed, he weaved, he tackled and dived. He mowed down every turkey who got in his way. Oh, that's one healthy looking bird, said Coach Giblet. Only the biggest and the best for my team. Father grinned proudly. Mother got tears in her eyes. Runt got tears in his eyes too. Then his beak began to drip. He caught, <coughs> he wheezed, <coughs> he sniffed <coughs> and sneezed. <coughs> he fell to the ground in a hacking fit of quivering feathers. Good gravy, shouted the coach as he hopped back onto the team bus. These are very sick birds. The corn shuckers deserve better than he sped far, far away from Wishbone Farm. Oh, no football contract, said father. No TV commercials, cried mother. No Turk sandwich with cranberry sauce, cried Runt. Hooray! Oh, but no one listened to, tr to Runt. It was Thanksgiving morning. Turk's family heard the putt, putt, putt of a little old car. Out of the car climbed a little old lady. Well, maybe she's a little old talent scout, said father. Maybe she's a little old dance instructor, said mother. I hope she's a little old vegetarian, said Runt. Father and mother pushed Turk to the front of the barnyard. Show her what you've got. But before Turk could perform even one pirouette, the little old lady scooted him aside. Aha, she exclaimed, pointing at Runt. Exactly what I've been looking for. This bird is just the right size for me. What, cried mother? What, him, cried father? Help, cried Runt. But no one ever listened to Runt, so he ran. He ran behind father. Don't let her eat me. He ran behind mother. Hide me, hide me. He ran behind Turk. I'm too young to be basted. Turk saw the look in the little old lady's eyes. He saw the drool on her lips. He saw the fork in her pocket. And he saw the roasting pan in her back seat. Runt had been right all along. Work with me, Runt, Turk instructed, or your goose is cooked. Turk bobbed and weaved, Runt flapped and drooled, Turk leaped and twirled, Runt coughed and wheezed. <coughs> Runt gobbled like a maniac, gobble, 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 while Turk dived down and tackled the little old lady's shoes. Nonsense, cried the little old lady, climbing back into her car. I wouldn't eat these birds if they were the last turkeys on earth. That day, as the family feasted on corn and alfalfa, they had much to be thankful for. I'm thankful we're all together, said mother. I'm thankful for two brave sons, said father. I'm thankful for such a smart brother, said Turk. We're not out of the woods yet, Runt warned. Come December, folks begin planning their holiday dinners. Dinners that include stuffing, asked Mother. Dinners that include gravy, asked Father. 
dinners that include m m me? asked Turk. Over my feathered body, Runt said. We're not plucked yet. I have a grade A plan. And this time, everyone listened to Runt. Do you see where those turkeys are? Ha, clever turkeys. That's the story of Turk and Runt. Go, 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 go. Another poem from It's Thanksgiving by Jack Prelutsky. This one is called I Ate Too Much. I ate too much turkey. I ate too much corn. I ate too much pudding and pie. I'm, stuff up. I'm stuffed up with muffins and much too much stuffing. I'm probably going to die. I piled up my plate and I ate and I ate, but I wish I had known when to stop. For I'm so crammed with yams, sauces, gravies, and jams that my buttons are starting to pop. I'm full of tomatoes and french fried potatoes. My stomach is swollen and sore, but there's still some dessert, so I guess it won't hurt if I eat just a little bit more. What's the best way to stuff a turkey? Take them out for pizza and ice cream. Hello everyone, this is the story of was the night before Thanksgiving by Dave Pilkey. Twas the day before Thanksgiving, and all through the trees the fall leaves were spinning aloft in the breeze. Eight children had boarded their school bus with grins in hopes that a field trip soon would begin. They sang as they rode through the autumn terrains while visions of drumsticks danced in their brains. O'er rivers through woods with winding and weaves, their school bus sailed on through the new fallen leaves. When out on the road there arose such a clatter, they threw down their windows to see what was the matter. When what should their wandering eyes should they see but a miniature farm and eight tiny turkeys. And a little old man so lively and rugged they knew in a moment it was Farmer Mac Nugget. He was dressed all in denim from his head to his toe with a pinch of polyester and a dash of Velcro. And then in a twinkling they heard in the straw the prancing and pawing of each little claw. More rapid than chickens, his cockerels they came. He whistled and shouted and called them by name. Now Ollie, now Stanley, now Larry and Mo, on Wally, on Beaver, on Shemp and Groucho. The turkeys were chunky with smiley beaked faces and they greeted the children with downy embraces. So out through the barnyard they ran and they flew and they gobbled and giggled as friends sometimes do. Then somebody spotted an ax by the door and she asked Farmer McNugget, what is it for? With a blink of his eye and a twist of his head, the old farmer told a grim tale. Tonight, said McNugget, these feathery beasts will be chopped up and roasted for Thanksgiving feasts. <gasps> the children stood still as their tear as tears filled their eyes. Then they clamored aloud in a chorus of cries. No. Oh dear, cried McNugget. Now what shall I do? So he dashed to the well, and the teacher went too and they fetched some water fresh from the ground in hopes that a swig might just calm everyone down. And when they returned to quiet the matter, the children were calmer. Huh, 
and mysteriously fatter. The boys and the girls drank up their drinks in the hay, and then they thanked old McNugget, and they waddled away. Hmm. They limped to the school bus, all huffing and puffing. It's not easy to walk with hot turkey stuffing. And then, as the school bus drove off in the night, McNugget looked round. Hm, not a turkey in sight! Twas the night before Thanksgiving, and the stars up above shone down on a school bus abounding with love. The very next evening, eight families were blessed with eight fluffy Thanksgiving turkeys as their guests. They feasted on veggies with jelly and toast, and everyone was thankful, the turkeys the most. So, each one gave thanks for love and for living, and they all had a wonderful, happy Thanksgiving! The end! Happy Thanksgiving! Gobble, 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 gobble! Oh, a turkey Tom and a turkey Mom, they gobble, gobble, gobble all day. When the moon goes down and the sun comes round, they gobble, gobble, gobble all day. Arm in arm on the farm as they strut their merry way. Oh, a turkey Tom and a turkey mom, they gobble, gobble, gobble all day. What do turkeys have that no other birds have? Baby turkeys. If you liked the jokes that you heard today, they came from the book, holiday jokes. You can find this at the Champagne Library. This is the story of Plump and Perky Turkey by Teresa Bateman, illustrated by Jeff Shelley. The people in Squawk Valley were downhearted and depressed. Thanksgiving was approaching, but without its special guest. They couldn't find a turkey for the feast they planned to eat. It looked like they'd be making do with bowls of shredded wheat. A plump and perky turkey's what we need, they all agreed. But finding turkeys nowadays is very hard indeed. The birds have gotten smaller and they all seem quite aware that it's best to disappear when autumn leaves are in the air. A plump and perky turkey! Stomachs rumbled at the thought, but how to trick a turkey into jumping in the pot? Then Ebenezer Beezer had a thought pop into his head. If we can't find a turkey, let's have one find us instead. We could hold an arts and crafts fair, he declared with wink and grin, a fair with one grand turkey prize that all of us could win. And since our goal is turkey, that's the theme we'll take to heart. We'll fill our fair with folks and fun and tons of turkey art. We'll make turkeys out of spuds and out of clay and out of rope. We'll make turkeys out of oatmeal and turkeys out of soap. We'll hang a bunch of posters in the forest way down low to invite some turkey candidates to model for our show. Why, even turkeys understand, as everybody knows, you can't make turkey art without a turkey there to pose. Now it happened in Squawk Valley lived a turkey known as Pete. He was cocky, he was clever, and he really liked to eat. While he strutted through the forest, plump and perky through the pines, he was startled and intrigued by all those interesting signs. With a proud and jaunty gobble, he gave out a hearty cry. A plump and perky turkey? Well, I'm sure I qualify. Gobble, 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 gobble. Pete applied for the position and he strutted plump and proud. He could barely 
hardly wait to model for the large and eager crowd. You're hired, shouted Beezer, for all the folks had all agreed that Pete the Perky Turkey was the answer to their need. "'Twas the week before Thanksgiving when Pete posed to do his part, and the artsy, craftsy townsfolk started making turkey art. They made turkey out of spuds, and out of clay and out of rope. They made turkeys out of oatmeal and turkeys out of soap. <laughs> Thanksgiving Day, the artwork done, they asked the model down to judge their homemade turkeys and to pick the best in town. Now when the judging's over, Beezer, Beezer whispered with a smile, we'll tuck that model turkey in the oven for a while. Oh no. Well, Pete judged each piece of artwork as the hungry crowd all cheered. He stopped to take a closer look and then he disappeared. There were turkeys made of spuds. There were turkeys made of rope. There were turkeys made of paper. There were turkeys made of soap. The room was full of turkeys in a wall-to-wall -wall collage. For a clever bird like Pete, it was the perfect camouflage. Do you see Pete? Can you find him? Do you see him now? There he is. He's over here, old Beezer said. He's here, said Jacob Green. They searched amongst the turkeys, but their bird had fled the scene. A, a note in turkey scrawl they found half hidden on the lawn. Goodbye, I took my modeling fee. The oatmeal bird was gone. <laughs> Now, the people in Squawk Valley were left feeling rather blue. The only turkeys left in town appeared too hard to chew. Oh, well, said Beezer brightly as they gathered round to eat. Right now, at least I'm thankful that we still have shredded wheat. <laughs> now that day, folks, they learned a lesson that stuck firm with them forever. A plump and perky turkey can be pretty doggone clever. <laughs> the end. Here's one last poem from It's Thanksgiving by Jack Prelutsky, and it's called Leftovers. Mm. Thanksgiving has been over for at least a week or two, but we're still all eating turkey. Turkey salad, turkey stew, turkey puffs and turkey pudding, turkey patties, turkey pie, turkey bisque and turkey burgers, turkey fritters and turkey fries. For lunch, our mother made us turkey slices on a stick. There'll be turkey tarts for supper. All this turkey makes me sick. For tomorrow, she's preparing turkey dumplings stuffed with peas. Oh, I never thought I'd say this. Mother, no more turkey, please. Hi, I'm Miss Kristen, and I'm going to show you how to say thank you using American Sign Language. You will need one flat hand. Put it up in front of your lips in front of your chin, but don't touch. Bring it down in front of your body. Thank you. You will make this gesture towards whoever you are thanking. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Together, we are going to sing a thank you song. Get your hand ready. Thank you, thank you, I will say. Thank you, thank you every day at my work and at my play. Thank you, thank you, I will say. Let's do it again. I'm going to add some more signs. You can try them too, and please join me on the most important one. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, I will say. 
Thank you, thank you every day at my work and at my play. Thank you, thank you, I will say. Thank you for joining us for some of our favorite turkey tales. We hope that you enjoyed them. Happy Thanksgiving. There are so many Thanksgiving and turkey books at the library. Come and check them out.